Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Cloud Thinking, where I discuss topics that I find interesting and are typically technology focused. My videos range from evaluating software used for investing, uh, such as mobile apps and web services, to how I perform research on different companies I plan to invest in. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with uh, today's video. This is going to be the Robinhood Future Investments Part 2. Uh, in this video, I will cover the stocks I plan to invest my money uh, going forward over the course of the next year uh, using the Robinhood training app. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the uh, stocks that I plan to move into going forward. So uh, I broke these down by industry based on the New York Stock Exchange classifications, and there's quite a few of these. So uh, guys, I apologize. I'm going to kind of move through them fairly quickly. Um, if I don't cover something, definitely leave me a comment below asking me if uh, you know if you'd like me to cover it again later. But uh, the first industry is basic industries. And the first two I have are UN for Unilever and PG for Procter & Gamble. Uh, these are both leaders in their industry and have a wide range of you know, major products for home and personal care. Uh, Procter & Gamble even has, uh, I believe, pharmaceutical products. So these companies uh, sell massive amounts of name brand items that most people simply use every day. And... Uh, you know, most people probably don't even know about Unilever. So, um, currently Unilever, and uh, it is, of course, it's down today as with as with a lot of stocks today. We're, we're down. So, but you start looking at three month, four percent, one year, thirty one percent, and the five year up ninety two percent. So, Unilever is a a you know a large market cap company. Um, 74 billion does have a dividend yield of 2.93 and as you can see the 52 week i mean it's up over uh, 20 bucks so so not a bad stock to hold on to for a long period of time unilever is definitely not going to go anywhere the product lines that they have are 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 really great product lines and they're they're going to consistently be used so procter and gamble uh the one year up uh, 9.32 percent and up 56.46 percent for the five year. So uh, one month up and down. You know, it's it, you know it was up 0.14 percent, but three months, of course, you know it, it, it went up a little more at 4.82. Uh, Procter and Gamble. Let's see stats. Uh, 92.72 for the open. And let's see the 52 week high is 94.67. And it started out, you know, in the last year at 81. Uh, of course, it has a dividend yield as well, uh, 3.10, a low volatility company. And then uh, definitely reports, you know, above expected earnings. So, all right. So the next uh, industry we're going to go to is capital goods. Now, I covered one of these earlier. It was Ford. So I'm not going to go back over that one. But uh, we have GM. Now, uh, GM, of course, for the the growth of 31% over the last year, the growth of 104%. Uh, I know there's definitely been some recent news articles about GM and what their plans are. Um, as well as, you know, GM has won awards for both of its electric cars. You know, I believe it was the uh, Chevy Volt and Chevy Bolt, I believe. Uh, and through some research, I also found that GM is an actual major player in the electric car battery development uh, industry. So, uh, and you know, GM does have a dividend. So 4.36, not too bad. Um, of course, market cap 60 billion. Uh, PE ratio, it's uh, really low. So volatility low, and of course, above expected earnings. All right, so next one is Albemarle. So Albemarle is is to me, I feel unique. They're in a, they're in a great position. So over the last year, as you can see, up sixty plus percent. Five year, one hundred sixty two percent. And there's a reason for this. Um, Albemarle is actually the number one lithium producer, um, and of course, it has a quarterly dividend one point four two. Uh, as you can see, 14.23 uh, market cap, and 
Uh, volume for today, not that high, but you know, average volume one over a million. Um, and the 52 week low was 76, and you know, it's opening at 129 and high of 129. So definitely uh, on the rise. It's definitely one to uh, that I feel to keep in your portfolio because you know, number one lithium producer, all the tools and the cars, you know, everything is. It's going battery operated. So, all right. Uh, so the next one is consumer non-durables, and what we have is a BF dot B, which is Brown Foreman Class B, um, and it is of course an alcohol, uh, alcohol spirits wine uh, company. Uh, they have around forty alcohol brands, which include major whiskeys and vodkas, tequilas, bourbons. Uh, and of course, it's also a dividend aristocrat, as I mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, dividend isn't massive, 1.49%. Uh, but you know, this company does have a good, uh, solid uh, year. It's 16.27%, but their five-year, 88%. So this is definitely a long-term hold, in my opinion. Next on the list is. MCD McDonald's and McDonald's is up 35.2 or 0 0.02. Sorry, um, you know McDonald's is definitely on the rise. They have a lot going uh, for them as well. Uh, they definitely have a lot of talks of new kiosk-based technology, self-serve kiosks, even mobile ordering uh, capabilities, which I'm sure most of you have seen. Uh, how mobile mobile ordering uh, kind of impacted Starbucks uh, over the last year. Um, yeah, you know, they, I've seen that Starbucks had some uh, some issues with that, but it's technology, right? They're, it's gonna get, it's gonna improve. Um, so McDonald's, of course, 126.57 uh, billion market cap, uh, 25.10 PE, and dividend 2.97. And as you can see, I mean, it's it's up from 110 to to 156 at the high today. Now it's of course 153.46. But you know that's a, it's a good, a great one year, five year, definitely a, a long term hold as well. Next in the consumer services industry is Wynn Resorts. Uh, this is a real estate developer, major casinos in Macau and Las Vegas, uh, lots of other uh, real estate, uh, and it, it's prime real estate in these major gambling destinations. Now. Uh, it does have a dividend as well, 2.31, uh, 14.47 billion market cap. It's up from 82, uh, 51 in the last year, and you know it does have a a great one year and a great well a great five year as well. Um, it's definitely a long term hold, and uh, you know this uh, this is one that I'm definitely going to get uh, within the uh, consumer services industry. All right, so let's move on. Uh, next, we have XPO, and this is XPO Logistics. Um, now, this company provides distribution and freight services. Uh, works closely with Amazon, from uh, what I've been reading for like I think last mile shipping things like that. So, if you take a look at its one year, up 82 plus percent, and I mean, look at the five year, 414.45 percent. Now. You know, company does not have a dividend yield, which you uh, you wouldn't expect, because this company, I believe, is uh, wish we could see all. Uh, I'd have to go back and check, but I believe that you know they aren't extremely owed. So um, it's one of those things. In time, uh, companies like this will uh, supply a dividend. It's, uh, I think it's pretty typical. Um, so as you can see, 52 week low was 31.68. And you know it it's up to 63.74 at this time, low volatility and earnings you know above expected. So this is a uh, you know all of these stocks I plan to hold for a long term, and and of course I'm really going to rely on the, the dividends to increase over time and keep reinvesting those as well. All right, so next we have uh, some ETFs. So um, and of course. 
you know, I, I chose a few ETFs for dividend payouts and, you know, just to add some diversification. Now, I, I did choose uh, some good ETFs, in my opinion. So, first uh, ETF is uh, DVY, which is a iShare Select Dividend ETF. And, you know, I went through, really did a lot of research over one year, five year, uh and if the company went back far enough, then I would do up to like 19 years or 20 years, uh, and then pull averages from that, uh, just to try to just to try to really take a look at trending, right? So, and of course, as you can see, uh, you know, ETF it, it's not doing bad at all. Uh, five year, 88.85 percent up. One year, 11.35. Um, 0.97 over three months, and as you go through. 1.61 one month the uh one day of course it did drop off this this uh the see this evening but you know this is this is still a long-term hold uh it does have a, a decent dividend 3.54 uh, and is a 17.07 billion dollar market cap um volumes pretty low but you know this is etf i believe uh people tend you know they hold on to this uh more so all right, so on to the next one. We have SCHD, which is Schwab uh, U.S. Dividend Equity ETF. And again, you know, great one year, uh, great five year. So, you know, that's mainly what I'm looking at. You know, I go through and I may glance at the one weeks and things like that. And I'll use my other web services to really dig into many, many years back. Uh, just to see how it's performed, but ultimately, you know, I, I go with uh, more long term. So that's mainly what I focus on. Uh, dividend yield 3.00, and market cap 5.95 billion. So, and of course, uh, low volatility. All right. So next up, we have SDY, uh, which is uh, the SPDR S&P dividend ETF. Currently at 90, uh, 94. Uh, one year, uh, it's up 11.66 percent, and five year, uh, a really good 92.44 percent. Uh, very good performer to me. Um, that that's something that I like to see over the five year period. Uh, dividend yield isn't massive, but you know, it is a 2.70 percent. Um, of course, low volume, of course, because, I mean, these things don't get traded that frequently throughout the day. Uh, P.E. ratio, 22.64. And, you know, 52-week low was 80, and it's at 90. So, not a massive increase compared to, you know, a lot of other stocks. But, to me, the diversification, the dividend, it, to me, it's kind of a no-brainer for me. So, all right. So, moving on. Next, we have the financial sector. So, you know, I really only have one stock in here right now. I, you know, I've been looking at this, and I think I may wind up adding another one. Um, just because there's a couple I've had my own, you know, that, that have had some really good performance. So, so I may wind up just adding another. Now, this is a Lincoln National Corporation, and I, I truly like this this uh company well because you know they're let's see their major focus is insurance retirement and investing uh it's been around since 1905 so <laughs> not really going anywhere right uh not unless something major happens with with this company or it's major merger or things like that and that definitely has not been any information on anything like that so uh, it's been going strong since 2012, uh, and it has a dividend as well. So uh, let's see the one year up 63 plus percent, the five year up 225 percent, right? And of course, it focusing on insurance, retirement, and investing. These things will always be required by by majority of your uh, of individuals, you know, who who can. Uh, who can either afford to invest in retirement plans or in you know invest in stocks? So, so this is definitely one that is on is a priority for me. Um, 1.57 dividend yield. Um, 
average volume 1.61 you know volume for the day nobody's really it's not really a whole lot in and out uh, market cap 16.17 billion all right so let's move on all right now the next group of stocks uh, are in the healthcare industry and uh, the first two ABBV and ABT are actually, uh, you know, they started out as both as Abbott, and then uh, they they split off, and I believe one focuses on pharmaceutical side, and another one probably focuses on technology, medical technologies, things like that. Uh, but you know, both of these are definitely top uh, top players in the pharmaceutical industry in the healthcare. So ABBV is a uh, Abby, and you know. 37.29% in the last year. Uh, five year is 196, 100, almost 197%. Uh, $85 stock or 85.30. Um, and, you know, there's lots of volume with this stock. It's which you'd expect uh, with $137.97 billion market cap. Uh, PE ratio 20.98. Dividend yield. 3.75 decent dividend um again definitely fits within the category of stocks i really like to uh to hold so this is going to be a long term uh now with abbott i really like abbott and of course it has a great one year at 28.91 uh, percent uh down in the five year but i believe i may wind up switching out Abbott in the long run, uh, but you know, I don't know. I, I I follow a lot of medical news and things like that, and and I, you know, I believe they it's it, it's a pharmaceutical company. So these companies are definitely at the mercy of product launches, drug approvals, uh, you know, things like that. Those items definitely it's it's a product, so it controls their quarterly earnings. Uh, and with these stocks, you have to be aware that healthcare pharmaceutical stocks are, they're up and down. So uh, definitely, you know, do your research before you go hopping into healthcare stocks. And just, uh, I suggest really understanding how the healthcare industry works and how the pharmaceutical industry works, because it is going to be key to really understanding what you can expect at quarter ends and things like that. And if drugs aren't approved or drugs are approved, because that definitely impacts how these, how the, the price fluctuates. All right. So moving on, the next one is, I believe it's Zotus, uh, is, is, I believe it's how it's pronounced. It's Zotus Inc. And, you know, this is not one that's super well known, uh, that, or at least that I that I have heard of, right? And I actually I, I study a lot of pharmaceutical stocks, and that's because it's the leader in sales of pet pharmaceuticals in healthcare, uh, and it's definitely increased in the last four years that it's been traded uh, publicly. Um, let's see, I believe it is up 24.16% uh, in the last year, 108% in the last five years. Uh, has a dividend, but of course 0.73. Not substantial, but you know the growth of this company definitely makes up for the small dividend. Um, 52 week low, 46.86. You know it's uh, currently at 63.33. So you know definitely a, a good growth stock. Uh, it's, it's, it's you know good earnings, um, and I'm sure you know you know people love their pets so. This is definitely not, uh, you know, going anywhere. So it's definitely, to me, a, a really good long term. Okay, uh, next is Johnson and Johnson. All right, so I don't think I have to introduce this company, but uh, for those that don't know, personal care products, pharmaceutical products, name brand, you know, has most of the time has its own aisle in, in pharmacies and things like that. Uh, you know, yeah, it's down today, but long term with Johnson and Johnson, I mean, 13.25 in the year, 118, of course, five year range. You know, these products have been out for so long that 
it, you know, this is simply a hold stock. You know, you get 5, 10, 20, even 30 years, uh, and it's a dividend aristocrat, right? So 2.73 continually grows, continually paid out. You, you definitely can't go wrong with Johnson & Johnson, in my opinion. All right? Uh, of course, it's going to be a low volatility. Earnings, uh, you know, consistently above expected. And, yeah. I mean, I went back and you can just look at a 15, 20-year uh, growth with Johnson & Johnson. And it's definitely one to, to, uh, to hold on to. Okay. Next on the list is CNC. Now, this is healthcare as well. Um, it's, I believe, Centene. Uh, and, you know, this is this works with government healthcare. Uh, this is this healthcare company, you know, it provides services specifically, I believe, to government sponsored healthcare programs. Well, I don't want to say specifically, but I believe that's their, you know, kind of what they're, what's, what's pushing their growth right now. Uh, they have really good six to seven year growth. Uh, you know, so look at that, 391%. I mean, that growth is phenomenal. Now, of course, I'm sure these guys are at the mercy of changes to government health care and things like that. So that is something to, to constantly be aware of. Really get to know this company. Um, I've been doing more research, and I believe, you know, they're starting to – Look better for where well, you don't have to have that concern. If chain, major changes happen to the you know government healthcare, then what's going to happen with this stock? So, um, yeah, this is no dividend, but you know it's growth. It just makes up for it. So, uh, 52 week low, 50 uh, 50 uh, 50 dollars. It's at 92.32. So, uh, definitely one to stay in my portfolio. All right, so next up, we the miscellaneous category. And I only have one stock in there, and, of course, that's Alibaba. Now, Alibaba, uh, and then if you've – anybody's been listening to the news, you know, Alibaba is, you know, nice solid growth over one year. Uh, it doesn't go back full five years. only goes back to uh, 2014, but 81% in the, those five years. Now, if you don't know what Alibaba does, it's a company. They currently offer products, services, and technology for e-commerce. Uh, I continue to hear something just about every day uh, about this company, uh, and you know, through my research, I believe it's a it's a really great co- company, and they have really good leadership who are kind of aggressive, and they definitely uh, want to you know improve their company. So, definitely one to. To keep your portfolio diversified and also to to see that future growth. Next, uh, we are moving to public utilities. I have one uh, in here for now uh, since I do have uh, what I consider to be few stocks in what will be my portfolio over the course of the next year. And uh, this is uh, Centerpoint Energy. Centerpoint Energy. Major energy company, uh, great growth uh, over the last year, five years. Uh, last year alone, 27 plus percent. Five years, 72 percent. And, you know, good dividend yield. I mean, 4.18 uh, with the growth. Uh, definitely, you know, it'll, it'll keep everything looking good. Uh, plus, it adds that diversification of having, you know, a utility company. All right, next. We have technology stocks. And first on the list, I have UCTT. Now, this is Ultra Clean Holdings. Uh, they're robotics and automation hardware. Uh, of course, you know, no dividend at this time. It's a technology company. Not, most of your technology companies like this, is, they don't pay dividends. Uh, they, they choose to, I believe, reinvest their money in research and development at this time, which, you know, it's technology, so they really need to do that. Um has huge growth, uh, which you know, I believe will continue as companies continue to automate and streamline their processes. Uh, to see growth over the last year alone was 282.62%. This is a $26 stock, and to me, again, to me, it's a no-brainer for me. Um, 367%, so this is definitely one that 
will probably be my next go to uh, immediately as you know th- as soon as I put some more funds into my account. Uh, I mean, 52 week low, 6.79. Of course, this is not that old, you know. Um, and there's it's had tons of growth, uh, you know, due to automation, I'm sure, of distribution centers in, in the U.S. and things like that. Uh, market cap, uh, it's 890.03 uh, million. Uh, PE ratio, 19.32. Flow volatility, earnings, uh, exceeds expected and yeah definitely uh do some more research on this company i you know i really i really like this company for its growth and i, I believe that that's going to continue in the long term so all right so next on the list we have take two interactive software and for anybody who does not know these are video game creators uh, with the likes of Grand Theft Auto, NBA 2K franchises. Uh, one year is up 111.54%. The five year, up 833%. Now, we all know video games. We know they're not going away anytime soon. And again, this is just, this is one of those, you hold. I mean, you can go through and look product launch after product launch. You know, these companies keep improving these games and it, they just get better and better. Right, and then who knows what's coming with virtual reality and things of that nature? You know, it's just going to continue to improve. Plus, you got esports on the horizon. Uh, so it opened at ninety eight point zero seven. It's currently at ninety seven point three seven. But again, like I said, you know, a lot of stocks went down today. Um, yeah, if I look through mine, I could go through and count. Most of them went down, but long term, they're all going up to me. All right, so 52-week high, 103.73, and let's see, earnings. Earnings is still above expected. Next, we have Apple. So, of course, Apple, you know, obviously to me is kind of a no-brainer as well. Uh, they're to me, I feel like they're set to increase rapidly over next year. I know some people are. You know, they like the iPhone. They don't like the iPhone. But just based on earnings of an iPhone alone uh, throughout the year, you're <laughs> many billions uh, of of increased revenue. Uh, plus, you know, Apple, to me, I don't think they're in VR and things like that yet. But I have a feeling, you know, they're planning to, to get into that. Plus, if you look down, Apple's uh, market cap is massive right so they could you know the amount of capital that they have to throw into research and development you know there's it's just nothing like it so uh 778.31 billion uh pe ratio uh 17.41 dividend isn't massive but then you know then they need to put that money back in uh, research and development so you can watch the growth so of course, the you know this is mainly due to iPhones. I think they are uh, starting to look into new services that they can provide to enterprise customers and things. But hey, you know they, as far as I'm concerned, this company can continue to invent new things and 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 come out with uh you know new products and things like that. If people don't like this iPhone, they just go back and. And change it and make it to where you know the next one sells. You know, that's how it goes with Apple. Um, so one year up 39.80. The uh, five year is 77.04. Next we have Activision. Now Activision, of course, another it's a uh, Activision Blizzard. It is another video game creator. They have major franchises such as Call of Duty, StarCraft, Heroes of Storm, Hearthstone. These are, you know, uh, Heroes of Warcraft. Uh, They'll also continue to grow. I mean, theirs isn't like Take Two, but, you know, 40.50. Well, yeah, they're up uh, 472.79 in the last five years. You know, they're going to continue to release new games and 
sales are, are going to, you know, these games are going to continue to sell. They have a, a following and, you know, it's just like the next top movie release. Uh, everyone's going to want it. So I think this company, you know, for a video game company does have a dividend of 0.72, not huge, but you know, it does have a dividend. That's 46.90 billion. And you know, it's, the volume, you know, 2.92 million. It's a big company, so people are definitely in and out of the stock. All right, next we have, I believe, ADI. All right, so ADI, uh, analog devices. Uh, now, analog devices, this is part of that Internet of Things. You know, they make hardware sensors. Uh, as you can tell, the more that grows, the more this will grow. Um, last year alone, 36.64%. The last five years, 144.45%. Uh, now, $30 billion, $30.84 billion market cap uh, does have a, a, a dividend for, you know, a tech is 2.61. And you can see the growth from the 52-week. Um, it is definitely doing well. Uh, earnings above expected and this is definitely uh one to that's you know going to continue to grow internet of things is you know, everything is going to get a chip right well that's kind of the plan for all of this and that's what uh, a lot of these companies are banking on so Let's see next and last on this list we have logitech now Logitech, of course, is tech hardware, and of course, esports sponsors. So, you know, their name is all over everything that's used for esports, the gaming community, uh, you know, just any consumer computer hardware. Uh, let's see, the stock is what 68.29 percent this year alone, uh, 342.55 percent. I mean, this is, and it's not going anywhere. Esports is just going to grow. We all know ESPN has its own esports channel now. Um, I mean, you can go on YouTube and watch videos on esports competitions. You can research the pay. The, the, the pay just keeps increasing and increasing. I mean, these games are selling out major stadiums. It's just going to continue to grow. So definitely keep your eye on uh, Logitech. Uh, yeah. Well, everyone, that is it for this week's, uh, you know, cloud thinking edition. Uh, please don't forget to like this video if you found the content helpful. Uh, share and subscribe uh, to the video if you found it informative. And if you would like to stay up to date with my progress going forward over the course of the next year, then, you know, subscribe. Also, uh, leave comments below. Uh, that you may have about future videos or if you have any you know any tips for me that you found where any news articles things like that uh, if you don't have a robin hood account and you'd like to sign up for one you can use my link below uh you know you'll get a free stock it won't be i don't think something highly valued but it's still better than nothing and until next time youtube good luck trading <laughs>